Okay, today we will be turning our classroom into a little Damien Hurst art galleries when we will be creating our own version of For the Love of God. The only difference is, is that we will be using this polystyrene head instead of a human skull and instead of $100 million worth of diamonds we will be using $10 worth of sequins. The polystyrene head, it is quite different to the skull, it hasn't got the features of a skull being, you know, the eye sockets, the mouth socket, the jaw. But I think, especially in the younger years, that the polystyrene head is a much more suitable base to use, so to speak. It's probably less daunting, but you can still make those real life connections as it does still have the definitions of a normal face, not the skull. Now the sequence, I suppose you could do this any colour you want. Um, I've chosen to do it like Hurst has done his diamond skull with dark charcoal sparkly coloured sequins, black sequins which I'll be putting in the eye sockets and in the mouth to show the 3D effect like the skull has where those bits are hollow. I'll be using these silver sequins for the bits that I want to highlight. For example, scar, um, Hurst has got a little bit of a pattern here on the forehead of the skull so I'll be using that to sort of illuminate certain bits that I want to. The application process for these sequins is probably not the most conventional way. I'll be using these sequin and bead pins which are just available from Linkcraft, Spotlight, Officeworks may even have them. And what they are are just little pins that have got a bit of a, a head on them to keep the sequins in place. Now it depends on how much lesson time you have. You may not want to complete the whole head, which is what I'm not going to do. I'm going to start at the rim where this uh, polystyrene head has sort of got a, a line going around it. And we'll just be applying the sequences so. Now, Hurst uses a lot of precision and his diamonds are strategically paced, placed individually. And this is what you would ideally want to achieve with your children. I suppose you wouldn't do this with the younger years because of the appreciation factor of this. They need to understand what they are doing and they have to have an intention to their artwork. So with these, you just get the sequence with the raised bit facing up, put the pin through, without pricking yourself and attach it to the head as so. Now I would say to even do half of this you would need at least two lessons so it might be an idea to have one child work on one side of the face while the other child works on the other face and that brings in cooperation techniques. The symmetry may not be the same which I doubt you would get anyway if one child was to do this but it's definitely a worthwhile idea. Okay so we've made a little bit of progress. This has taken about 35 minutes and I would say it's a quarter done. If we speak in Damien Hurst terms, I've used probably $25 million worth of diamonds and I've got $75 million worth of diamonds left. I would say judging from what I have done, you would need at least three lessons in the classroom to complete this model. At this point in time, I would be asking the children questions such as how long do you think it took Damien Hurst to complete his For the Love of God? How frustrating do you think it could have been? What techniques do you think he could have used to make sure that the diamonds were perfectly aligned, just like our diamonds are perfectly aligned? Um, what thoughts do you think Damien Hurst may have been thinking at this point? How long do you think it would have taken him to get to where we are now? And maybe just create a general discussion in the classroom. I would recommend that each class goes for about 30 to 45 minutes so children are able to see the structure of our polystyrene heads. As you can see here we've got the ears which are defined, the skull which is defined and the nasal cavity coming down to the chin is beginning to have some definition. I've used darker beads around the sides of the nose like as I said earlier to show the 3D effect that this would have if it was a skull. So 
as I mentioned, start creating some discussion within the classroom and make sure that the children stay focused and on task. Okay, so almost two hours later, we are down to the very last sequence to be attached onto our version of For the Love of God, and it will be complete. The final product should look something like this, where you have definition in the eyes, definitions around the nose, and definition in the mouth. Up the top here, as we discussed earlier, I've put a representation of a flower. Now, this flower means something to me. It instantly makes myself part of the artwork, as this flower represents something that is close to me, such as the garden. I love gardening, therefore I am putting a flower on the skull, as Hurst made his little imprint on the skull with larger diamonds. It is trivial to what your children can put on there. One may put a love heart on there because they love their friends. Another may put a picture of a star on there because they love looking into the universe. It really is trivial what they put on there. I think it's a good idea for them to come up with something themselves as to what to put on here so then they connect with the artwork themselves and they instantly become a part of the artwork without being in the artwork itself. It has taken two hours, um, so I suggest that you plan for at least four art lessons to have this complete. It's not done to the precision as to what it should be, and I think that is something that teachers need to reiterate with their students, that it's not a piece of artwork that can be rushed, it's a piece of artwork that needs a lot of time and effort put into it. I think the finished product is something that will mean something to their children because it definitely means something to me. This is, I've created it myself and to think that this is my version of an actual artist's artwork is quite moving in the fact that anyone can be an artist, anyone can create a piece of artwork. It does not matter whether it's a good piece of artwork or whether it's a bad piece of artwork. There's nothing to define a good piece of artwork from a bad piece of artwork if you are happy with what you've produced yourself. It may not pass in an art gallery, but it will certainly be a very good item to put in the classroom as it does represent the children and their abilities and what they're capable to do.